Welcome back everybody. As you can see, I've got my favorite rustic outdoor apron on, which could mean only one thing. I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways to cook a venison steak. Now, hold on. This could also be used for beef, bison, elk, you name it. It's amazing. It's a chicken fried steak recipe. Oh, stay tuned. I have my Blackstone griddle heated up and we have a large cast iron skillet here with about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch of peanut oil. Love using cast iron skillets and Dutch ovens on the griddle. So I have this small large cast iron Dutch oven. Can use it to make my gravy today. I think I have five or six versions of this on YouTube. So just use that search feature and chances are if you're thinking, hey, you should try it with, I've already done it. We have so many versions of this. So I'm gonna make a gravy for my chicken fried steaks. I don't need to reinvent the wheel today. Check this out. I found this on one of my Blackstone trips last year. Old school brand, Southern style white gravy mix. Per the instructions, we have some cooking oil here. We're gonna put that down in my Dutch oven. I have some Nebraska mule deer backstrap steaks here. Of course, backstrap, that prized piece of meat on the backbone of a large game animal that hunters go crazy over, but you could also use beef steak for this. Maybe you wanna save money, you go to the grocery store, the butcher shop, right? They have a steak that, you know, it's not exactly filet mignon. Oh, perfect recipe for that because we're gonna tenderize this and we are gonna make it so delicious. Grab your favorite meat tenderizer. Blackstone has had a lot of these over the years. This is one that was retired a long time ago. Oh baby, it is razor sharp. And we're gonna take my little backstrap steaks here and I'm gonna tenderize them. I'm gonna break down those muscles and make this thing even more tender than it already is. And again, I'm just following the instructions here today. So unless you have this brand, they won't necessarily help you. Lots of different companies have gravy mixes on the market and you can make your own with flour and seasoning. Add my flour mixture into my oil. My oil and flour mixture is already starting to simmer and get a little bit thicker here. So now we add our milk. Time to work on our batter. We have some all-purpose flour. You'll see me doing so many different renditions of this, but one that I like is to use the Lipton Recipe Secrets Onion Soup Mix. This is, of course, also famous for my Lipton Onion Burger recipe that I use a lot. This is great because it has seasonings with it. So I have a couple cups of flour and I'll put a couple packets of the Lipton Recipe Secrets in there. If I don't have the Lipton Onion Soup Mix, I just add my own seasonings to the flour. The last time I made this recipe it was on my own YouTube channel about six months ago and I used the French's dried onions, you know those crispy crunchy little things? Perfect for this recipe as well. The egg wash, I don't really need to add milk to this. I'm just gonna crack a bunch of eggs and we'll get these ready to dip our steaks as soon as the oil gets up to temperature. You can see my gravy is starting to thicken up a little bit. Temperature check on my oil. I'm trying to get it up around 350 degrees and I think we're just about there. I have my steaks here. I'm gonna put them down in my egg wash. I like to have a rectangular or a square container for my steaks here. Uh, just easier when you're dipping a steak or French toast for that matter to be able to do more than one at a time. And then straight back here into my flour and Lipton onion soup mix. I'm gonna grab my little pinky pigtail flipper here that Hungry Hussy gave me many years ago. We're gonna put our steaks down into my hot peanut oil. It's been about two minutes or so, I'm gonna reach in there and flip my chicken fried steak. It's been a few minutes, I'm gonna pull my steaks. We're filming here, folks, running and gunning, so I had a few accidents. I broke some steaks off camera. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna layer these up. I'm gonna basically shingle these on my platter. Over to my gravy, which as you can see, has thickened up nicely. Uh, <laughs> folks, I have to tell you that 
a lot of things you don't see behind the scenes like stakes breaking and me making mistakes very stressful so i would appreciate a thumbs up right about now take a look at that just gonna give a little dusting of salt and pepper on top we are gonna dive in there let's <laughs> Let's give it a try. So good. That chicken fried crust, I guess you would call it. So good, believe it or not. The salt and pepper and garlic on the end. Great touch. The gravy on top, so good. The last couple times I made these, I did like a horseradish sauce. I did ketchup, of course, because that's my old standby. But of course, with chicken fried steak, it's really hard to argue with a white gravy. Speaking of white gravy, apparently I made enough here to feed a small army. So we're gonna say goodbye and get a bunch more chicken fried steaks for the whole family. Thanks for watching everybody. These were delicious. We make them several times a year and you don't have to have venison. Of course, you could do these with beef steaks as well. So make sure you check us out at blackstoneproducts.com. We have so much going on. And until next time, this is Todd and I'm saying praise the Lord and pass the chicken fried steaks.